Merry Christmas! And here's the Christmas gift for you for the paper one, Governance Business and Ethics. And the gift is just to be a personal mnemonics for the roles of the non-executive directors. I'm going to use mnemonic call this, for this, it's called the PRSS. So first of all, what do I mean by non-executive directors then? So for the populistic companies in the UK as well as the USA, they are using the unitary board structure. And both of these executive and non-executive directors, they will have the same status as well as power. So the executive directors, for example, would be the CEO, the CFO, and so on. Those directors arrive at work on time, for example, 9 a.m. in the morning. But for the non-executive directors on the other side, it is just to be the outsiders to the organization. And that means those non-executive directors, they will not arrive at work on time, and they are the experts to the company. So why do we need those non-executive directors then? One of the very, very important arguments for this is without the non-executive directors, that the shareholders' wealth cannot be protected in the first place. Because it can be seen in many instances in the real life that the executive directors tend to make the risky decisions for the company on, on behalf of the shareholders. And hence, if the company fails, surely the shareholders will suffer. But at the same time, most of these directors or executive directors, they're just to claim a lump sum of bonuses from the company, even though the company is not doing a good job. So without those non-executive directors, we cannot protect the shareholders' wealth to some extent. And that's the reason why we introduced the non-executive directors, yes, in those populistic companies following the corporate governance rules or principles. So the roles of the non-executive directors, the first P stands for people. In deciding who would be the directors in the board, it is not the CEO who decides what to do. For example, Mary will be a director or John will be a director. But rather, it's up to the non-executive directors from into the nomination committee to decide who would be our directors and who would not be our directors. And second, R stands for the risk role. So non-executive directors will form into the audit committee, or sometimes you can call it as the risk committee. So the audit committee is responsible for ensuring the good internal control system within the organization and manage those risks that a company is facing effectively as well. So that's the second role and making sure that the executive director's decision are not so risky in the first place. And the third role stands for the strategy role. And that means both of these executive directors and non-executive directors, they will have the same responsibility to ensure that the strategy will be successful after implementing it. I mean, if this is not the case, for example, the strategy fails, not only are we going to blame the executive directors for making a wrong decision, but also we will blame the non-executive directors as well by not challenging the decision that has been made by the executive directors in the first place. And finally, we've got the scrutiny role. And that means the non-executive directors have to make sure that the board as a whole will be effective, making quick or timely decision, and also making effective and good decisions for the shareholders to make the company successful. So those are the roles, as you can see, of the non-executive directors. Okay, hope you're happy with it. So use mnemonics for this, it's called PRSS. Okay, so Merry Christmas again and good luck with your paper one exam. APC, accounting for your future.